We've just installed Starlink at our new place here in Trentham, and so far, it's been pretty impressive. And for those that don't know, Starlink is one of Elon Musk's brainchilds along with the amazing team at SpaceX, so it's pretty closely tied to Tesla. All right, so let's start with the cost. It's $924 upfront for the hardware. So that includes the satellite and the mesh Wi-Fi router that comes with Starlink. And then there's an ongoing $139 per month for the internet connection, which possibly makes it the most expensive internet you can get for a residential home. Page did, however, find a few secondhand Starlink satellites on Facebook Marketplace for around $500. They were the older circuit dish generation which is still good but the new generation has a slightly stronger router a smaller design and also weighs a little bit less than the original I actually think the rectangular shape looks really cool and is not your average looking satellite dish if you do end up buying a Starlink secondhand, it turns out all you need to do is just get the seller to transfer it into your account so you can put in your location and payment details. Now, where we're based here in Trentham, we don't really have any cell service, so no cellular data. The house does have an existing NBN satellite connection, but we had no luck getting that connected to the internet. Plus, the NBN satellite maxes out at 25 megabytes per second download, which for us is probably not enough. I'd ask anyone to comment below that's using NBN satellite, but let's be honest, they're probably not even able to watch this video. All right, welcome to the first official Starlink speed test, the moment you've all been waiting for. We've got pretty clear skies above us, so good conditions, and we're obviously right next to the mesh router, so we've got full Wi-Fi strength. We've got some kangaroos watching us in the paddock behind. So let's hit this speed button and see what we get. Okay, so you're not gonna believe this, but we're getting a download speed of 125 megabytes per second. That means that this is faster than any other internet connection we've ever had. What I would say though, is that it has been fluctuating. I've done several tests throughout today on my iMac as well as my phone, and it doesn't always reach speeds that high. I mean, this is the fastest that I've recorded. I guess it depends on conditions and time of day and things like that. Now for the placement of our satellite, we've opted to put it on this little garden shed as we're renting this property. We didn't want to permanently fix it to the roof or anything like that. We've actually strapped it down so it's not gonna go anywhere, but it's pretty well secured and the satellite being heavy, it actually feels pretty solid to the roof. And actually the Starlink app has a really useful feature that allows you to scan the sky using the camera in your phone and determine if there's any obstructions, therefore letting you know the optimal location for your satellite. And after testing a few different spots, the garden shed actually ended up being the best location. It's worth noting that it is a very long cable that comes with the satellite. So we're able to run this from the garden shed all the way along the house to the Wi-Fi router near the living room. So yeah, pretty impressive. And interestingly, when it first gets connected, the satellite actually starts to move and rotate, which I believe is one of Starlink's advantages, the fact that it actually can move to find a better connection. So we've just taken the dogs for a walk around the neighborhood. And now that I know what the Starlink looks like, I've actually noticed a lot of the neighbors have mounted a Starlink to their roof, which is pretty cool. Interestingly, Starlink offers a business satellite with double the antenna capability, much faster speeds for $750 a month with a one-time hardware cost of just over three and a half thousand dollars. It's also crazy when you start to think of the use cases for Starlink. I know that they're working with a lot of airlines at the moment to get Starlink satellites installed in the top ceiling of planes, which would just be incredible for internet speeds while you're flying. Then there's the maritime use for boats and ships to use Starlink and have high speed internet out in the middle of the ocean. They've also started installing Starlinks at remote supercharger destinations in the US. So when you pull up to charge your Tesla, the Wi-Fi password, I believe, comes up on the display inside the car and gives you high-speed internet. Like, how awesome is that? Or you could do what this Model X owner has done and mount the Starlink to the actual car. We actually need to find a way to bring the router inside the house because this is obviously a brick home and is hurting the signal strength a little bit when you're inside. Obviously, when we finish building our new place, we'll have it professionally mounted right on the roof, which will look really great. What I would say is the installation was like the easiest thing ever. Massive kudos to the Starlink team for making it so simple. You basically just plug it in, download the app, and it prompts you to just create a username and a password for the Wi-Fi network, and then you're up and running. It 
also arrived really quickly. It only took a few days to ship to us. By the way, the post office gave it to us on this trolley. It's actually not that heavy. The only thing that was a little weird was the condition of the satellite itself. It had clearly been used by someone else, so it had some marks on the back and there was no plastic wrapping or anything. Not really what you expect when you spend $900. So how have we been finding the speed so far? That's the question that you're all wanting to know the answer to. And so far, it's been fine. We haven't had any issues. It just seems like normal, good, fast internet no lagging or anything. I did have Safari drop out on me at one point, but as soon as I reloaded it, the internet was back up and running. So I'm not even sure if that was related to Starlink. It's gonna be interesting to see how we go this week using the internet in a heap of different ways, even with me uploading and downloading with all the content and YouTube stuff that I'm doing. And then tonight we're thinking we're actually gonna watch Game of Thrones, the new series that's out. So that'll be the first time that we're streaming using Starlink. And that's gonna be between the 5 p.m. to 10 p.m congestion period that they do warn you about on the app. The app actually has a bunch of really cool features that are built in. You can actually get quite a few analytics on uptime, downtime, latency, any network issues. So it's pretty comprehensive and very easy to use. So if it wasn't for Starlink in this particular location, I'm not sure what we would have done because we wouldn't have really been able to get any good internet. We probably would have had to like rent a hot desk in town or something, not ideal. So very grateful that we're able to get Starlink in this location. Anyway, let me know in the comments if you've enjoyed the Starlink content. It's not my usual Tesla content, but hopefully you found it useful. Also, we're picking up our Model Y very soon, so stay tuned for some very exciting content coming with that. And there's the birds flying right over. Pretty special here. All right, I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.